This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and it might seem strange that my voice is coming out of a painting of Mona Lisa, but this tutorial is about making the Monty Python mouth that goes up and down and is made of cutouts of other photos, and it's a lot easier than you think because you don't even have to keyframe everything. We'll be using audio to drive the animation, and you can probably get all of the component parts you need from the Creative Commons of Wikipedia. That's what I did anyway. So I'll stop talking, and we will get into the tutorial. And then I'll talk again. So the first thing you need to do is bring in some footage or take some pictures or what have you. So what I'll be using is a picture of Mona Lisa as taken from Wikipedia. It's part of the Creative Commons, so you're pretty much free to use anything there. And what I'm going to do is create a new composition. And we're going to use HDTV 1080 24 frames a second preset. 30 seconds is enough duration. And what we'll do is we'll just bring our subject matter out into position and we're going to call this one the body of the piece and we know that in the background we need to cut out a hole where the mouth is at so we're just going to zoom in here and I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm going to start by cutting along the corners of the mouth and then I hold down alt and then I bend one of the arms to wherever I would like and then I continue drawing the pen tool is good because you can Hold down space and reposition the points as you need, depending on if you feel you're making mistakes or you just want to alter the thing you're on. And then I'm just going to draw along the lip line and to the other side. And again, I'm going to hold down Alt and then Shift to get it to snap right down. Zoom out a little bit. Continue holding down Shift and click down here to the bottom of the jawline and then finish that off we go and finish the whole piece. So by default what we have here is a rather unflattering cutout of just a mouth. So what we're going to do now is duplicate this. I'm going to name one of these mouth and the other one is already named body. I'm going to select both layers, hit MM to bring up their mask properties and for the body I'm going to go with subtract instead of add. So now we've got one piece that is the mouth that we can move around and the other piece that is behind it. One of the things we have to do though is get rid of this unflattering line here that happens between the two masks. Just because of the average pixels there's loss in there so we take the one that's on top and we expand it by one, we take the one that's on the bottom and we expand it by negative one or contract it by one. So the difference is negligible to us when we perceive this but as you can see, it has the overlap in here, so there's nothing to worry about. Depending on the scale of your image, you may not require as much, you may require more. I'm not totally sure, but you need to do something to fix that problem. So the next thing to do is parent the mouth to the body, and that's because, just in case you start animating this around, one will follow the other as you move it. Now you can go to the position of this, and you can see that by altering these, this makes it go up and down. So you would like to reset this back to where it belongs and now we can get into bringing in some audio and making this animate. And you can just drag that into your project and then drag it down onto the timeline. And to call up the waveform of the audio just hit LL and it'll bring all that up. And you can see the flat parts here are where nothing's going on and then the waveform indicates audio amplitude. Now we need to turn this into something we can use. So we just have to go animation, keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. This will convert all audio present on the timeline into keyframes. Hitting UU to bring those up. If you go in and you select the slider and then you look here at the graph editor, you can see a waveform that mimics the waveform of what we saw in the waveform audio. So it's very similar in what it's created. We don't need the left and right channels, so feel free to delete them. And now we're going to go into the mouth, hit P to call up its position, and we'll use an expression to move this around. So hold down Alt, click on the position expression. Now I'll just drag this down so we have more room to see what we're writing. So what I'll do here is I will say we'd like the end result to be value plus, and then in square brackets, x comma y. So that's going to be the output. We would like the x to equal zero because we don't want to change the first part then semicolon and we'd like the y 
to equal a linear expression that will link the values of the slider there into something we can use. So what we'll do is we'll use the third variable, let's say L, and that L will equal the slider here, semicolon at the end of that. And then the Y will equal a linear expression. And then in brackets, we will map the L and we'll map it from say two to 20 and remap those values to zero comma 15. Hit return on that. Now what you'll find happens is that it starts to add values to this number. So it's going to take the position it is, it's going to add zero to this number, and then it's going to add a linear expression of this converted to be a new number, and it'll go in here, increasing that value and pushing it away. Depending on what you're doing, you may have to do negative y, you may have to alter these values here to be something else, depending on your amplitude, and depending on how big your picture is. This scale happens to work for this particular piece only because these are the correct values for not pushing this too far. See, for example, if I went 0 to 100 or 110 or whatever, this is too far. It's, it's pushing it way beyond the bounds of where we can tolerate it being. So you'll have to feel out for yourself where those numbers are for your piece, but all in, this is the basics of creating position information out of audio amplitude information. And it's a quicker way than keyframing to have your audio interact with the piece. You could go through and keyframe all of this if you so desired, but why would you when a computer can do most of it for you? One thing I'll say though is to analyze the slider here, you're gonna to wanna to look at the graph editor and use the value graph, so edit value graph, to generate the units that you wanna to use to understand that range. And you don't necessarily want it to be going from zero to 20 here, just because there are small murmurs that you might not want to move the mouth. The rest of this thing is all styling. So we would do something like create a new solid for the background, making it uh, something light. So that'll be the background. And then we also brought in a frame to use just because frames look nice. So put that in and rotate it, scale it up looks quite nice and you can style this up any way you choose but what we did is we made all of these things three-dimensional and then we offset them a little bit so we offset the position of the frame to like you know negative 250 so it pops out a bit and then we offset the position of the body to negative 100 so it pops out a bit and then we applied some texture onto the wall and then we took a camera made a new camera go with that then we keyframed its position from the start to the end, moving it in slightly on this and moving it up a bit just to zoom in on the piece. And then it's just a matter of adding drop shadows and all that. But those are all things that you can do for yourself. But just remember, if you're putting anything behind, it will cause whatever that hole is to show through. So go ahead and just create a new black solid Click OK to that, parent that to the body as well, put it behind it, make it 3D, make sure its position is lining up, you know, directly on top of it. And then you can just shrink and scale it down to fit in so that it does its job. So all in, that's how you create the Monty Python mouth. I don't know if you've seen any Monty Python movies, but they ruined most of my childhood and the way I tell jokes irreparably, which really makes social situations awkward. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching this Premium Beat tutorial. If you want to learn more, stop by premiumbeat.com for tips, tricks, and tutorials in After Effects and other applications. And of course, come to Premium Beat for all of your music and sound effects needs. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.